It's like Christmas, honey. <laughs> this is my Christmas. Oh my gosh. We have become to be on a first name basis with our UPS guy. There are lots of packages arriving. This is a Sailrite Ultrafeed sewing machine that Julie will describe a little bit more later on. Julie also chanced upon a great deal on sales. These were on a previous Sabre 30 and the owner had lost his boat in a storm when the mooring broke. The lithium iron phosphate batteries finally arrived. I ordered these on February 6th. They came on May 20th. My dad once had a saying, I remember as a kid, he'd say, uh, well, that'll be on a small boat from China, meaning it's gonna take a long time to get here. Well, true statement, it took three over three months to get here. As we unpacked the batteries, I labeled them all and prepped them for testing and assembly into our battery box. Well, let's get on to our project. This is cool. I've sanded at the scupper because we have a lot of leaks here. It wasn't sealed very well. And then got to looking close and I can pull, I can actually pull it out because it's only being held in by 5200. So that can be cleaned up. I think I'll epoxy it in because they only put it in with, looks like just silicone. So nice little find. Clean that hole out. I replaced the scupper pipe with a piece of PVC and epoxied it in place. But that's the way things were going everywhere on the boat. I just kept finding the next issue that needed to be addressed. The next piece I wanted to go ahead and remove, replace, or rebuild. Like the anchor locker. Might as well wire brush the loose items, prep, and paint that as well. I kept telling myself there has to be a line in the sand drawn somewhere to call it time to paint, otherwise this cycle seemed like it would never end. On any given day, I'd start at the bow and just work my way back. And eventually, we got to the point where it was acceptable. For the paint, I used a product from Total Boat. It's their topside paint. I thinned it 10% and used one of the smallest sprayers that Harbor Freight had that tended to provide the best finish that I found. And it takes about 10 pounds of air pressure. The next step is taping in preparation for the non-skid.
The non-skid paint we used is a product, again, from Total Boat, called Total Tread. All of the Total Boat products i found to be very easy to use. The non-skid paint requires two coats at least and it's very easy to touch up. Okay, this whole project is almost worth it just for the tape peel nirvana you get as you peel the tape. Next step is to start reassembling. One of the first things I did is resurface the cockpit teak boards. They were very worn, but I was able to get a flat surface, reround the edges, and then finish and replace. For any of the items on the boat that require some moisture protection, we opted to use butyl tape. Much of the research that I did, many people use butyl tape to uh, seal surfaces. This is the car. Each of the cars have 30 bolts that go through it. I have all the pieces or components of our port light cleanup. So I thought I'd show what it's taken to do this. This is a big project. So this is the lights that are the port lights that came out of the boat. They were all leaking. Um, they were put in by this, uh, I think this is butyl tape, black butyl tape. And uh, what I have to do is just slowly pull it off and then I just work a chisel in there to just kind of get all the way around. It takes a, quite a long time. And then I break it down and you get the individual pieces. And obviously they had the butyl tape in there and since it was leaking, the previous owner or owners just would, it looks like they took them out and then packed it full of silicone and stuck them back in and then they siliconed the outside and they tried to take the inner piece off this here. They took the inner piece off, silicone the inside and put it back on. So all these nooks and crannies and gaps and stuff is just packed full of crap. Uh, this groove here where the, the new acrylic will go is packed full of sil silicone. So I'm, the way I'm cleaning that out is I'm scraping it out as much as I can and then I use my Dremel with a uh, uh, 
a brush on it, a round brush. So then I just work, you know, work the uh, work the angle all the way around. So then once I have it completely clean, uh, I found this by trial and error. I tried to just really clean the outside, and then I powder coated it, and the powder coating didn't stick as as well as I wanted to at all. I mean, it just looked. Uh, it looked just looked bad and in some spots there was bubbling on it and that kind of stuff so once I get it to this point I use my drill and this is kind of cool craftsman makes this stuff uh, it goes on your drill and then it just has a little screw to uh, put it on your drill and then these are uh, coarse uh, conditioning discs so there's a whole package of them it's almost like uh, Almost like a Brillo pad, not Brillo pad, but uh, it's not metal. Uh, it's a very coarse pad, and uh, that really scuffs up the material. So uh, I try to be careful with it, but I want to try to get it as clean as possible. And then on my four-inch grinder, I found these discs, which is 320 grit uh, sandpaper embedded into the into the uh, the pad. And then when this, this puts out a lot of dust, so I definitely wear my, my uh, breathing protection. So then I bake this for 20 minutes at 425. Aluminum is porous, and if there's any volatiles that have gotten into the aluminum over the years, uh, they would actually bubble the uh, powder coat. So the baking uh, takes all of those vol volatiles out. The powder coating process itself is super easy. I coat the inside with aluminum, just cover this part up because I don't want to powder coat that part. And then I made a rack for this to sit on and I attach, attach an electrode to this, spray your powder coating and it just goes sucks right up to this. And then uh, the oven is heated up to 425 at this point. Um, I turn the oven off, put the piece in and then turn the oven on to 350 so that the burner doesn't go on right away and uh, the burner is underneath the metal piece at the bottom of the oven and this piece sits fairly close to the bottom and uh, my first piece I had some bubbling along the edge so that part of the oven got too hot so I wanted to make the oven warmer than it needed to be and then cool off over time uh, and then you know the element would just keep it at 4, 3, 350 to uh, bake it in and then this is the result. Um, we have two pieces done so far, so I can put one, one window together. And they turned out pretty good. So i uh, got a clean white surface. It's all one color. It's not multiple phase, multiple colors of aluminum that uh, scratches and other things in there. So this looks much better than what it is. So the way I'm going to seal this, I've done lots of debating and research, researching on this. And... Um, a lot of people use butyl tape for everything on the boat. I'm taking a tip from Sailing Uma. They did their port lights and did a lot of research on it. And they used uh, this. It's a Dow Sil 795. And this is what they use on skyscrapers for the windows in the skyscraper. So that's, you know, extreme element uh, exposure. Uh, up in the air and the rain and sun and all that kind of stuff. So that should definitely uh, help with our port light situation. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, I've got a piece of uh, MDF that I've made into the shape of the window. And I've got my uh, plunge router set with a bearing to run on the MDF. So we're just going to trim up these edges here. Uh, the MDF lets me make four of them that are exactly the same.
<laughs> so I own five sewing machines. Um, and you're probably thinking, why do you need five sewing machines? Well, a sewing machine is a tool and each sewing machine has its purpose. Um, so I just wanted to show you some of the things that I do with my five sewing machines. So this is the first one. This one I bought when I was 15 years old. Um, yes, I bought a sewing machine instead of a car. Um, and I still use it. Um, I'm making baskets right now with this machine because um, it's a singer. It does, it's simple, but it does everything. And I love the way it sews and I love buttonholes. I still do my buttonholes on this machine. Then the next machine is my Bernina. I got this about 15 years ago. Um, and this is awesome for like fine sewing, like prom dresses, silks. It does everything. I actually did the reupholstering of our um, RV on this machine. It worked. It was a little difficult, but it still works. So a great all-around machine. This is not the high-end Bernina. Like some of them can go for thousands and thousands of dollars. This is a good all-around machine. I told you about the RV and doing some upholstery and I was doing more and more upholstery work and heavier work. So eBay, I found this baby. It is a 1969 Toyota Morris um, sewing machine. It's heavy duty, it's got the belt, um, and it's got a strong engine in. It's all metal. It's an awesome machine. I think I paid like $300 on eBay. It was all reconditioned. And then Russ made me this awesome um, table to go with it. Um, and this like has made upholstery um, and doing heavy work so much easier. The only problem is it doesn't have a walking foot. And a walking foot... Um, is one that actually walks. It has its two uh, legs actually move and on the bottom it moves. This one only has the walking foot on the bottom, not the top. So um, it makes things, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to get things nice and smooth and to put through um, material. It also has a low, um, this is not that big here so if I was putting in really thick things it's a lot more difficult to do so that being said I knew I had to upgrade because um, the Bimini and the Dodger I knew I couldn't do on this machine so oh before I get to the last one I have another machine it's up in the attic it's my like I want to go somewhere all-purpose like cheapy machine that I don't care about when we were living in two houses two different places in Charleston and then up here I had that one down there just to do simple stuff so then Pause. then I bought decided I really needed a sale right we had seen this at the Annapolis boat show five years ago yeah. six years ago it'll be six and yeah it'll be six years in October um, that we were to the Annapolis Boat Show, and I saw this and I fell in love with it. When I thought about buying this before I bought my Morris, um, my Toyota, but at the time I didn't want to spend the money, I know. Um, but, and I was thinking more, I wasn't thinking about sale work, canvas work, I was thinking more about upholstery. So, um, but this one is... Um, I got the full package from Sale Right, the LSC one. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, it has totally revolutionized um, what I'm doing and, and the quality I can get. There is a big learning curve on this. Um, so even if you are an experienced seamstress like I have, I've been sewing since I was five, this one took me a little while to get used to um, because things are all in different spots. Um, it sews a little bit differently than any of these others. Um, so I did a practice um, project and I made new cushions for our outdoor furniture and that was where I didn't care if I made mistakes or anything like that. It was just a great pra um, practice project and they came out awesome. So now I'm working on the interior cushions. Oh. Pause. Let me go get that. Now I'm working.
flipping on the interior cushions and it is pouring down rain right now and I am not running out to the boat to get <laughs> one of the big cushions. So, um, but this is the one for the nav station, the rust made. Um, I, in fact, I squeaked this out of the rest of the material and I can't say enough how well this sews. I was just, I'm thrilled with it. So this is a sneak peek at what's coming up. I've also been working on some bowls. Uh, this is one I had made before, um, but I'm making um, bowls right now out of wash line that I wrap and I'm making um, for in the boat where we have our cubbies. Um, so I'm, that's what I've been working on right now. So that one I use this machine for. Canvas I use this machine. Fine, like regular making clothes, all that kind of stuff. I use my Bernina. And then I also have my Morris there um, for more heavier work or things where I need a more industrial machine. So that's why I own five sewing machines. Oh, one final thing is um, Russ made me this table and um, the drawers. So I have all my stuff in the drawers, but this folds down. I can pull it out and I have my nice um, workspace. So I can just, uh, and this has been awesome. I love my table. Um, and it fits three of my machines. <laughs> cool. So that's it for this story. We're making progress on all fronts. Uh, you get to see a lot of the top side uh, interaction with the boat right now, and uh, but scraping the bottom, making cushions, doing the electrical, sanding and painting the house. <laughs> yeah, that's my big job. <laughs> Multiple projects, and I'm making steps for the outside of the area back here. So, lots of things other than a boat going on as well. So that's it, and we'll see you next time. See ya. See ya.